Today, would you credit it? Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics World. Now this post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, being the last working day of the month, we got the APRA and RBA credit aggregate data up till the end of June. And it sort of makes a bit of interesting reading, although the momentum in credit is not as strong as some people were expecting. So to start with the overall details from the Reserve Bank says that to the end of June 2021 total credit rose 3.1% compared with 2.8% a year ago. Housing credit rose 5.3% compared with 3.2% a year ago. And business credit for the last year rose 0.6% compared with 4.6% a year ago. And in the last month, Housing credit rose 0.7%, personal credit fell back further, business credit rose by 1.6%, and also broad money was up 1.6% over the month or 7.7% over the last year. So looking in more detail at the credit aggregates from the RBA over the last month, overall housing rose 0.67%. For the last month, owner occupation overall was up 0.89%, and investment credit was just up 0.29%, so hardly anything really to see on the investment side. Personal credit fell slightly, and business was up 1.58% over the month. Now, of course, these monthly numbers are very noisy. And looking also at the total credit, it was up 0.92% over the month while broad money was up 1.59%. A little bit of further stimulus going on, of course, at the moment, so maybe not surprising. The more reliable annualised numbers show that overall housing credit rose by 5.3% over the last 12 months, continues its upward trend, but is still sitting relatively low compared with where we've seen previously. Owner occupation credit, though, is quite strong at 7.16% while investment credit is just 1.99% annualised, there is very little here that I think will trigger the Reserve Bank or indeed APRA tightening mortgage credit for anyone at the moment. So don't expect macro prudential anytime soon. The personal credit is still lower than it was a year ago, down by 6%. And business credit is just up 0.58%. So not a lot of momentum really in the business sector, still well down from where it was previously. And then if we look at the aggregate of all credit up 3.13%, it's still rising, but still significantly lower than where it was in 2016. While broad money was up at 7.66% annualised, bearing in mind, of course, that we're seeing further liquidity being pumped into the markets. That's not too surprising. Then we look at the APRA data, which of course is for the ADIs, the monthly authorised to take the monthly authorised deposit taking institution statistics. And there we see that the total lending was at 1.86 trillion. That's the largest number ever reported. Within that, the growth was in unoccupied loans more than investment loans. And as a result of that, the proportion of investment lending dropped to 34.82%. Now, this is total book value of all mortgages, including new loans, loans paid off, and refinancing, of course. We can also then look at the percentage changes over the last month. Unoccupied loans rose 1.1%. Investment loans are up 0.4%. And overall credit for mortgages was up 0.86%. So it's still high, but not that high, really. And then if we look at the individual lenders, Westpac, Commonwealth, National Australia Bank and Macquarie lent three quarters of the total amount. A few other small players are also lending. And interestingly, ANZ reduced their own occupied portfolio slightly while lifting their investment portfolio slightly. Now, of course, bear in mind that this is post any off balance sheet shifting or indeed securitization. So it may not give you the full story, but it is as reported by the lenders. Now, there was another interesting point that came out today from APRA, and this related to how to handle the question of loans during the current COVID 
resurgence. And it makes quite interesting reading. They said on the 19th of July 2021, APRA announced regulatory support for banks offering temporary financial assistance to borrowers impacted by COVID-19. A number of authorised deposit taking institutions have announced COVID-19 support packages that will provide affected borrowers with an option to defer their loan repayments. So this is about the prudential treatment of those loans. To assist ADIs in supporting their small business home loan and other retail customers, through this period, APRA is providing a temporary regulatory treatment for loans impacted by COVID-19. For eligible borrowers, ADIs will not need to treat a repayment deferral as a loan restructuring or the period of deferral as a period of arrears. This potential treatment will apply to loans that are granted a repayment deferral up to three months on or before the 31st of August 2021, whether or not the borrower has previously been granted a repayment deferral. ADIs must still continue to provision for these loans under relevant accounting standards. APRA intends to formalise this regulatory support through a temporary amendment to Prudential Standard APS 220 Credit Quality. This largely mirrors the approach taken by APRA in March 2020. And so they then issued a draft for consultation with the industry. APRA will require ADIs to disclose publicly and report the nature and terms of repayment deferrals and the volume of loans to which they are applied to enable an understanding of the impact of these loans on the financial system, APRA intends to collect entity-level data by recommencing reporting under reporting form ARF 923.2. Repayment deferrals also, and they also make the point that for transparency, APRA may also decide to publish entity-level data collected under reporting standard ARS 923.2, repayment deferrals. But to alleviate reporting requirements for small ADIs, the threshold for the collection of this data for total loan subjects repayment deferrals will be increased to a minimum of $50 million and $50 million and 50 facilities. So APRA now invites feedback on the draft revised attachment and it will be subject to a one-week public consultation with written submissions to the 6th of August 2021. And then APRA will finalise its response and register revised APS 220 as soon as practical under the consultation period. Now, there's a couple of points here. Yeah, it's probably appropriate to take note of what the banks are doing with regards to giving more repayment holidays. In some cases at the moment, banks are not, though, extending loans. What they're doing is just deferring loans, which means that repayments will be bigger later. But I have to tell you that the overall position of many households remains a concern to me. Certainly, the data is showing that mortgage stress levels are still very high. And there is more trouble, I think, ahead, particularly now. So it'll be interesting to see how much deferral is made and the implications of those. We should get some data on that later. But overall, standing back, the credit data here suggests that APRA and RBA will be sitting on their hands with regard to macro credential for some time. They'll be very keen for banks to continue to lend, to which I simply respond, well, that's OK. But I do think it's important that people think about what happens if, for example, income is now eroded again because of COVID and the closures, or indeed with broader issues across the economy. I still am concerned that many people are rushing into property without thinking things through. But at a structural level, the level of debt in the system is already so high and the rate of growth is relatively small, so the regulators will still, I think, be asleep at the wheel for some time to come yet. It's just a pity they haven't acted sooner. And of course, lending being the only game in town, the banks will continue to push loans as fast and as hard as they can. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.